Hey, welcome back. I just finished my war attacks, so that video will be posted probably after this video. So I don't want to bombard everybody with video after video, and I have the Soul Exchange video, the second one coming out soon too. So I think um, I do have some polls here. I've only got nine in. Uh, the tower and i'm debating whether i'm gonna buy more offers nine is not a lot of pulls but let's talk about these heroes real quick so we have camilla who um okay i had to pause it there and go kids were running around and it's like after midnight here so <laughs> I had to go take care of that. Okay, so Camilla. Camilla. So there's something that's important to note here. And if you haven't if you haven't used um Wizard Heroes or you know, like even I haven't used them very much. The only one that I have is Motega. I did get Malena in the last Soul Exchange. But let me show you the mana generation, their mana generation. All right. So I brought this up here. And uh, the wizard mana um, levels are up here. So what's pertinent here is that, let me see if I can, I can't move that. Oops. I'm still trying to figure out how to use that part of this program here. All right, so try that again. Here we have 5.5 tiles for the first match. That's, um, I mean, for the first skill, which is functionally very fast. Now, for the first charge here, these are the um, mana boosts that you need in order to charge in this many tiles. So at very fast, none of this matters. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Except that their passive is going to come into play. Now with their new passive, you do want to pay attention to this stuff. And now I'm see I see why they released these troops a year, a year ago, a year and a half ago, something like that give you time to level them up. Now you're going to need them because this passive reduces your mana. It gives stacks that reduce your mana generation. It's not cleansable. So let's take a look here. You their their second charge is what I wanted to show you. So they're functionally you can only get them to functionally uh Fast, I guess, functionally fast at plus 32% mana. And that's an awful lot. You know, they're a maxed out wizard troop is only going to give you 20%. So if you have a maxed out troop, plus you have this class bonus here of either 2 or 4% that's in the talent node, then you can, let's see. No, actually, none of that matters, does it? Because 10 tiles, I was going to say that gets you to function, that gets you to the average speed, which is functionally slow. So, unless you can hit 32%, then that means you need to add a hero like Hippo, Guardian Hippo, someone like that that does plus 30%, or Hulda, who gives you plus 24%, then you add, you know, this mana troop and you've got uh let's see what's that 20 so that'd be 42 no 44 percent so what i'm the long story short here is that these mana troops are all functionally slow unless you can really boost them like you really got to boost them to get them to the functionally average speed or functionally fast i guess there is no functionally average 
average speed is either slow or fast depending on your mana boost so let's go back to back to the heroes all right so now here we are with camilla again so now the reason why i wanted to go through that real quick is because i don't want to talk about their mana speed as magic that doesn't mean anything to you know to a player when they're using this hero so at very fast speed she will boost the health of all allies by 400 and all allies get plus 40 percent defense against special skills honestly there's absolutely nothing special about that now at slow speed you have reduces max health of all enemies by 800 and all enemies get minus 54 percent defense against special skills so this is great this is this is very good but it is at slow speed so the one thing that I like about reducing max health is that it means that you can, if you emblem her up, you can load that up on the defense and the HP because the attack stat doesn't matter. You're simply going to reduce by 800 no matter what your attack stat is. So that makes her much stronger uh, defensively. Gives her a lot better survivability and she still does the minus 800. So basically you've got yourself a healer here who kind of like Milena, i guess except that she doesn't yeah actually she's like the new version of Milena. you know 800 damage and then all enemies get minus 54 percent defense against special skills so um she's an upgrade and this passive this is going to be a pain when this character casts their special skill, all enemies get minus 5%. All enemies get minus 5% mana generation stack. That means you're gonna be it's gonna be very tempting to just keep casting their special at very fast speed. Because that negative mana stack is uh it can be I mean that that will end a, a team pretty quickly. So I really think that you should focus on their times one mana charge. I know this is, that was a long-winded way of, of getting to this, but the these heroes, you really need to look at their first mana charge you know, pretty heavily because that passive is probably better than most of their specials. Not passive. That um, No, it is passive. That passive is better than their specials. So here you've got at first mana charge, all enemies receive 400 burn damage over three turns. Basically, um, costume grave maker, and all enemies get minus 34 percent defense against fire. That um, seems unnecessarily specific. Dispels buffs from all enemies. So he's an attack hero, right? You're gonna. Put him on an attack team you'd never use him on defense and you can use him at first mana charge so set him off once you start you know their whole team burning and then minus 34 percent defense follow him up with honestly you know if i pulled him i would probably put him on a team with um el duke that would be nasty because at very fast speed you're He's going to do minus 34% defense, and then El Duke is going to give a, a negative 9 defensive stack. And then two more matches later, you know, they still got the negative 34% defense, and then another negative 9 defensive stack. And I would obviously pair, you know, the two of them with um, Ruby. So, you know, that way, depending on how the board is looking, you could hold Ruby until the next time these two charge, and then Ruby would, could potentially hit all. And yeah, But if you need her, you could fire all three of these at very fast speed. Now, at second mana charge, all allies regenerate 1190 HP over five turns. All allies get plus 50% attack against nature. That... Um, yeah, uh, that I, I don't think that's very useful. Cleanses status ailments from all allies at slow speed. That's just, that's an extra bonus, I guess. There's nothing, you can't, 
can't take him for the purpose of cleansing because he's too slow. So essentially, all he does is have a really big heal at slow speed. So you'll never use him at slow speed. Just forget about that second mana charge. He's basically just um, to help an attack team by giving defense down. That's at very fast speed. That's good. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't chase him. Uh, I think that would be silly. But you know, if you get him, he definitely, you know, has some utility. All right, Willow here deals 175 damage. That's not very much to all enemies. Dispels status effect buffs that affect defense. Why so specific? You know, I mean, I guess, I, I granted, yeah, it's a very fast speed, but only dispels buffs that affect defense from the enemies. That's not very useful. All enemies are immune to new status effect buffs that affect defense. So at her first charge, honestly, I, I don't think she has anything useful at all at first charge. Essentially, just consider her to be a slow hero. All allies bypass defensive buffs with their attacks for five turns. That's great. Uh, all allies reduce all received damage by... You know what? I wonder if... When this says dispels status effect buffs that affect defense, does that include counterattack? Defense... Oh. <laughs> okay. Let me, you know, let me start over again. Defensive buffs include counterattack. She's an anti um, Obacon hero. She's an anti counterattack hero. So you are going to take her on attack to have the ability to dispel status effect buffs that affect defense. You can dispel counterattack at very fast speed. And then all enemies are immune to new status effect buffs that affect defense for three turns. So she's not going. She's not only going to dispel counter attack, but she's going to prevent it the next time that he fires at very fast speed. So that allows her to keep charging the second time, as opposed to having to continue to try and set her off every time he goes off. Now, in that light, um, she has some utility against Obicon. You don't see Obicon very often. But I'll bet you dollars to donuts, you're going to start to see a bunch of very fast heroes with, uh, with counterattack. And she's going to be the counter to that counterattack. So a second mana charge, all allies bypass defensive buffs, including counterattack. All allies reduce all received damage by 45% for five turns. That's crazy. That's, a, that's, that's really good. All allies counterattack with 115%. So... Yeah, I see how you how they intend her to be used now is you start off with uh, getting rid of Obicon's counter attack and then you try and save her until her second charge. Which, you know, at slow speed, basically she goes to very slow speed because you got to probably use her first charge the first time. It'll, she'll be interesting. Then you have Telonius, who is not featured, but let's see what he does. All enemies take plus 50% increased damage from status ailments for three turns. All enemies receive 339 poison damage over three turns, which effectually is 500 poison damage because he increases his own poison damage before he casts the poison damage. So he he is going to be a good hero. This is one of those heroes. I have a feeling that, that these heroes are all being released before you know why they're being released. The same as um, Grimble was way back in the day. There were no minions when he was released. Now that they've, they're nerfing, they're balancing all the direct damage, they're greatly reducing the direct damage so that they can increase the dot damage from heroes. And when they do that, they can release more and more heroes that instead of the heroes that you're chasing doing direct damage, they'll do other types of damage. That allows them to keep making heroes and then without breaking the game. And heroes like Telonius here, you can pair him with Rain or D'Artagnan 
an increase to 50% damage from burn, from D'Artagnan's burn. I mean, that puts his burn damage at like 1,600, 1,700, something like that over, I mean, that's going to kill a hero. It, it puts him up to the level of killing a hero um, from, you know, from full HP to zero over the four or five turns that he, he does burn. And then second mana charge, recover 75% health for the caster and nearby allies. Caster and nearby allies are immune to damage from status ailments for five turns. Again, that's five turns is a long time. So, um, yeah, that's good. I think that you're going to see his real utility is going to shine a little bit later, but he's probably one of those heroes that if you pull him he's not going to be it's not going to be necessary to level him up right away i would probably put him at 370 and then wait until you get a hero that is going to you know be greatly affected by this plus 50 percent increase to um damage from status ailments so that's that Thelonious, I think, is probably probably the best hero here. Although I do like Willow now that I figured out that counterattack, she impacts counterattack. But she's very niche, right? You know, you're basically just taking her for that counterattack. Now, Lucy, in my opinion, this is another five star hero. Just she's easier to get and she costs nothing to to max out. First mana charge. Deals 180 damage to the target. That seems low, but Willow here deals 175 damage. Well, to all enemies. Okay. I guess she's only hitting one target. So each time the target activates their special skill during three turns, mana of all other enemies is reduced by 8%. That is. Maybe it's maybe it's somehow not going to play out as functional as it seems like it's going to but this is a just a very slightly reduced version of queen goang right every time the an enemy uses their special oh except that with her it's any enemy and then everybody gets minus 10 with uh, lucy here it's a very specific enemy so Lucy is not meant to be used on defense, but you know, on attack, you can hit a, a hero that's about to go off, or you can hit a very fast hero that's going to go off, you know, multiple times, like um, Alucard, and keep hitting them with that eight percent reduction. And then, so you got sort of a mini Queen Goang, followed by a mini Guardian Hippo here. All allies get plus 24% mana generation for five turns. Hippos plus 30%, but not for five turns. That's a long time. Hippos three turns. For the next five turns, this character deals 115% damage to all enemies each time any other ally casts their special skill. So Hippo does 300% damage. She does 115, which is just a little bit harder than a than a uh, slash attack but it takes almost nothing to get her to this level and you know you're looking at an attack stat of 937 so honestly lucy's the hero that i want because right now i have so many five stars that i can't i can't level the five stars because i don't have the mats so pulling any one of these they're just going to sit there for a long time but I would really like to get Lucy. And I'm probably going to pull um, Agrafina from the Soul Exchange. I used, I already recorded the video and I used the card that was on um, Small Giant's website. And it, of course, is not the buffed card. So I was talking through the attack up and the defense up that was pre buffed which is something like 56% and 60%, something like that. Now, it doesn't 
change. Honestly, it doesn't change anything except that she's just a little bit better. So, you know, now she has that, um, that, that rage style attack buff where it, it increases. So all allies get plus 45% attack and further 20% increase every time they're hit. So she's just even better. But, you know, other than, oh, well, let's talk about uh, Roxia here too. Your little three-star hero here uh, hits one target and then target receives 35% damage for all the damage their allies receive for three turns. She is like a little mini um, Quinton. And then second mana charge, all allies get 50% chance to bypass defense and buffs with their attacks for five turns. All allies get plus 30% critical chance. That's really good. She, you know, she'll help her team out a lot at second charge and her first charge like i said it's like quentin she marks the hero probably has the same little icon and they're going to take 35 percent damage so it's not as much damage it's not 100 percent, but 35 percent damage from all the other allies is going to kill a three-star hero pretty quick so she'll be good in um tournaments and stuff all right all that being said lucy's the hero that I'd really prefer to get here, but let's see, let's see what I get. If anything, <laughs> much with limited pulls, I'm going to get all season ones. Carl. Come on, let's see something here. I would like one of the five stars. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's always nice to grab one of the five stars, but honestly, uh, they would just sit there. <laughs> Literally, I'm going to get all season ones. One more, maybe I will buy an offer. Nine pulls is just not much here. All right, I'll be right back. All right. So like I said, I'm not chasing any particular hero here. I would just kind of like, actually, with Agrafina and Milena, I would like to have a magic team that um, has three magic users on it. And I... Uh, this passive is new, so only these new heroes have this um, negative mana stack, which I would really like to get that. We'll see if I can at least grab Lucy. If not, with, the, with these um, tower coins, and I'll do a 10 pull. Lee I'm working on leveling her up right now. I have a couple copies of her already. <sighs> Come on. Oh, okay, the hero of the month. She's honestly not bad. I first saw her, and for some reason, I was thinking she was average speed. And, you know, she only affects three of your heroes. Well, Roxy, at least I got the three star. And then I realized she was at fast speed. So that reflect ability for three, even though it's only on three of your heroes, at fast speed, there is something to be said for that. Because right now, you're either going to get that from a musketeer at average speed or slow speed or you're going to get it from Hawthorne Anton, we don't want Anton 
All right. So at fast speed, it's it's could be beneficial to uh, level her up if you need that skill. Wow, this is just garbage. Sergey is a great hero, but I already have him. Wow, that is just garbage. That's what, 29 pulls that I did? And only got the, the new three star. Put the odds in here. So 1.3 for a five star and 5.7, so 6% chance. That is not good luck. Oh, I have a faded summon here. So up to this point, I've already grabbed another Inari, another Bira, who's going to be really important coming up here. Another low key. I got Sif. I didn't have Sif before. So Guff John here is if you haven't seen the new hero Sorrow who's coming out in the Covenant um, Covenant portal she gives herself and nearby allies two minions and so that's six total minions and if those minions are killed then all enemy heroes take 200% damage which is basically two slash attacks for each killed minion so if someone like Grimble hits them, you're going to take 12 slash attacks on every hero. 200% six times on every hero. You could literally wipe out your team. You could kill your own team by killing their minions. So a hero like, like Gefion, I guess is actually how you say her name. Gefion steals the minions. So... And I believe that her costume actually kills the minions. So the non-costume version of Gefion is the only, I think, no, there might be four stars. Again, I am just really, it's like I've, I found a whole new game by um, being able to double limit break four stars. There are... I have to go back and look. I'm pretty sure there are four-star heroes that steal minions. So, um, you know, that's going to be the only counter for Sorrow. you got to steal those because that is much more helpful <laughs> than getting rid of them or just letting them sit there because they also give increased attack to their owner. So, you know what? Let's go in here. I do have enough gems to do. That'll end us at 39. Let's see if I can get at least... I guess technically I did get two four stars. I just, they were the old ones. So if you saw my video ranking the um, Faded Summon Heroes, that was uh, before I was thinking about um, the new hero coming out, Sorrow. No, right now is just, whoops, just not the right time to be pulling 39 heroes and just garbage. So, all right, I'm done. And I hope you got some benefit from talking through these heroes. Um, if there's another good offer, I'll probably buy it on one of the upcoming days again really i'm just trying to get lucy here because i really like the the ability to cut mana so every time her special goes off she cuts everybody's mana by five percent she has the same passive even though she's a four star so use her at very fast speed every time she goes off permanent mana stack and on top of that 
um, that mana, that negative mana stack, they are going to get mana cut by 8%. So mana control heroes are great. And Lucy is, is a great hero. So I haven't obviously used her yet, but I'm willing to go out on a limb on that one. So anyways, best of luck. And um, I hope your butt luck is way better than mine was. So I'll see you in the next video and have a good one. Hey everybody. So before I posted the video, I decided, you know, today's day two. Let's look around and see what the deals are. We got this deal here. That's basically a dollar per pull. So I thought I'll add a couple because man, yesterday was such garbage that, um, I figure my luck's got to be better today. So, um, I got two of those offers and figure I'll add a few more you know, summons on here. See if I can try to walk away with something here. These, um, these new magic heroes, their, their passive is so powerful that I really would like to be able to put them on some teams. Honestly, even just a couple of the I'll have, to, I'll have to level her up and see how strong she is at double limit break if she gets usable on a attack team. I doubt it. Three stars are still three stars, but we'll see here. Alright, well, she's showing up more frequently. Cyprian. I might hang on to him. I might make another minion team. Now that um, that that te that min anti minion team is doing so well. One more here. And let's. Um, I didn't want to buy all the offers because in case I pull a hero, I'll stop when I get one. Um, but don't have anything yet, so I'll be right back. All right. Got a couple more. Let's see. Let's... I'm just refreshing my memory on who the heroes are here. Let's go ahead. Gunner. The season one three stars are really getting outdated now. I wonder if they're gonna start hitting the you know the better season one three stars with some costumes. They don't seem to prioritize those. Renfeld. He's like my bad luck. My bad omen sign. Four more. Can we get another Anton? No, thank you. Something from the portal. Come on. Something new. Last one here. 
nothing yet. <clears throat> so let's see, that was 39 pulls yesterday. Just did 28 pulls there. That puts us at, what, 50, 66 pulls. Um, yeah, they're going to make me work for this. All right, well, I'll probably post this and then see if there's any other good offers. You know, I, I'd really like one, but... Um, yeah, they're not worth going crazy for, so we'll see. See what happens. Hope you have better luck, and uh, see you in the next video.